Hey, welcome back. So, uh, I wanted to talk about Guam and kind of where I've got to more from the perspective <clears throat> that I'm trying to understand uh, if there's issues versus uh, impatience with the gameplay. The campaign game is about 60, 60 odd turns and I think that that's you know that's the time that's the time it was right so it is what it is uh, I'm, I'm having a little a bit of a hard time reconciling the scale of the units with the scale of the hexes and the, and the time and then when I look at how combat works I'm I'm struggling with the, either the fidelity level or perhaps the the level of losses that are occurring. So over the course of let's so let's talk about scale first. This is a four map game. Uh, is it four maps? Yeah, four maps. There's a lot of blue space which is never used. It's uh, strictly for sticking naval units in and things like that. And you, you put your naval units on and off the map as you use them. Well, that's the net effect anyway. Uh, and you've got to keep them a certain distance away from the, the coastline so that uh, they don't suffer short battery attacks, which is another minor problem for me because I would imagine that at some point the short batteries would have been taken out as one of the priorities of the landing parties they would secure a beachhead you know uh, neutralize the shore batteries either via you know assault or aerial bombardment once they're identified and things like that even if they're dug into caves and all that sort of good stuff they would have been taken out at some point I'm not saying they'll be taken out in the second turn or third turn or fourth turn, but by the second, third or fourth day, I would imagine that at some they would be taken out. <laughs> thus, <coughs> thus, at some point, the, the need to keep things offshore at a distance would be obviated, and then you would not need to take any care for that. You don't really need the space on the maps. And my point about all that is that you would then be able to have a larger map with more island and a more granular scale, so maybe 500 meters a hex versus uh, 1,000 meters a, a hex, one kilometer. And that might change the level of maneuverability. It might give you some more choices in your gameplay. And it might change the way that combat evolves in terms of flanking attacks and, and things like of that nature. So, so it's not that it's a bad scale. I, you know, uh, but what I'm seeing happen is as the as the Marines and the Army pile up in their their landing lanes, and the little fortress sections of beachhead or uh, you know interior first first line defense interior on the in the clear are taken out. They uh, you know you get these forces come on the beach. You end up with these fairly significant stacks. Number one. So it's a little bit of a, a bother to manage. And even if they're consolidated into their battalion level units, <coughs> excuse me, you've still got three or four units of hex. And um, three or four units of hex. And as soon as you take a loss, you've got to break that guy down. So now uh, uh, a marine battalion is going to become, uh, well, these guys have four units, I think. Yeah, four units. So there's four units in a hex, right? Now I've got to pick carefully which one I, I elect to take the losses for. The Japanese have five units per battalion and they can get to play, they get to play a few little gamey games. So when they have to take a step loss, the first one you punt is uh, the artillery because it offers you the lowest defensive value and the lowest attack value. Uh, it doesn't necessarily offer you a lot of DRM value per se because uh, really the Japanese only only card of their sleeve is a bonsai attack where they triple their attack they you double their losses and get plus three dr so so you end up with these stacks of units and you're all kind of crowded in on the beach 
And I imagine that's and now. Well, actually, now we're not even on the beach. We're one to two kilometers inland, and I still feel like we're all packed in really tightly. And we're focused on trying to get around one hex to get multiple big stacks piled in to make an, uh, to fire uh, at the unit, suppress it, and assault it. And if it's not suppressed, you're not going to assault because you're not going to get the odds that you want. Because you you got to get two to one. Now, not three to one or four to one or five to one, but two to one. Because the others, those other odds just uh, it's not worth taking the extra losses uh, to to. Uh, get the benefit and I'll explain what I mean in, 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 I'm gonna come back to assaults in a second all right so let's cross my fingers and we'll let's try not to forget that so the terrain I feel that if we had more hexes of terrain we'd be able to do a little more fine grain maneuvering around you know what's ostensibly pillboxes or sets of fortification and sets of pillboxes and things and dug in caves and whatever it may be and We'd be using engineers more effectively. We'd be using the pioneers and the artillery and bringing pieces to bear. Uh, it's a lot of fiddly counting that has to happen as you try and maneuver these guys into these chunks of stacks. So I'm starting to write on the board, well, this stack is worth this many and this stack's worth this many because I've got defensive fire and I fire, uh, the Japanese fire, and what they want to do is try and get one to one or one to two odds on some stack somewhere and suppress them so that they're not as useful in <clears throat> in the, the coming fire and assault phases to try and delay the inevitable. So they go through that exercise, then there's an offensive fire and the guys try and suppress the fellas, the Japanese, and if the Japanese aren't suppressed, well then you're really not worth, it's not worth taking the risk of, uh, uh, of attacking uh, at anything worse than one to one. And even then, that's a, that's a, you run the risk of, 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 of hurting yourself more than you hurt the enemy. So, <clears throat> so the maneuvering, where's my coffee? The maneuvering side of things is, uh, is kind of, is lacking there in the game. And I'm not talking about tank maneuver and, you know, East Front stuff. I'm just a little tactical stuff. It's not there. Kind of a TCS scale thing. Because this all breaks down to platoons. You've got uh, battalions and sorry, battalions and companies. Uh, so I've got a battalion unit that I can break that down into the four constituent uh, companies, and then there are also platoon level units as well, tanks and things like that, AA and things. So you've got enough units there. I've got something on the screen. Uh, there are enough units there where you could actually have some fun maneuvering around in the terrain, and I think you can then have some more fine grain look at the terrain instead of just a big splash, splash of green, clear, dark green woods. You could actually do some stuff. So you're kind of missing something. Let's come back to this assault stuff. So in the assault tables, if we look at uh, the two to one column here, and the first result is the on the left is the attacker's result and the uh, result on the right is the defender's result. So you'll see that from seven onwards, you lose one H, one H, and then when you get to a nine, 10, 11, or 12, then it goes attacker loses one, defender loses two or three. Well, that's kind of the, the sweet spot because I don't ever want to get a 12 and I'm only rolling one die here. So I roll a die and I've got DRMs and, and typically, if it's an important attack, and since you're only doing two or three attacks a turn, because everything's consolidated right now, right? So the Japanese have got a battalion uh, dug in. They have a defense of 48 or 56 or whatever it may be. You need two, three, four, five battalions to attack that force. Halved, so they're halved, uh, if the Japanese are halved, to get two to one odds. But you also need an engineer an air unit, a naval unit, um, probably an army unit, if you can get it, get plus four, right? So you work on average, you get an artillery support five. So you work on average, you're getting plus five DRM, and you roll a, th and on average with a D6, you roll a three or a four, it means you're gonna get uh, either eight or nine, which is, that's the sweet spot I was talking about, that one, that one, two, where I lose one unit, and the enemy loses two steps. Now the enemy can retreat out of their fort fortified, uh, location or they can take step loss <coughs> excuse me still blocked up here 
I'm wondering if we have mold in our house. Uh, um, so having better odds doesn't help you because you run the higher risk of uh, losing two to get three kills. And I don't know that that's worth it given that you've got this loss cap that in the victory conditions that's gonna pull you down a victory level. And maybe I'm kind of stuck on that, but it just seems to me that you know if I wanted to have a major victory or whatever the, the highest level is, I gotta lose less than 10,000 guys. And historically, they only lost 8,000 guys, so there's gotta be a way to do that, I would imagine. And that's what I'm trying to work through here. So, what was my, what was my next point I was gonna make that was so ins freaking insightful? Um, these, these games, this game, this game in particular has been really well thought through and the rules are pretty straightforward. I don't really like the layout so much. You know, it's kind of written like an essay that with paragraphs versus, and it's, it's rule statements, but it's big, it's right across the whole page. And so it's just not rule book format. It's kind of an essay format is what I would call it with some case numbering. Uh, so the fact that, my point about the assaults is the fact that, that a two to one assault is, uh, gosh, hang on, that's a disaster. I just had uh, one of the charts for the Pacific War uh, fall off my magnet wall, because I've got the window open here, because we're flushing out the skunk smell, residual skunk smell. The skunk wasn't inside, dog got attacked by the skunk, or the dog attacked the skunk, and the skunk, the dog came in with skunk smell, and so we had to chase him out of the house, and it's a little residual smell here. It's all go-go at the shark house. So, let's keep going with this thing. So, there's this, this I've got this problem with the, this odds table, and that I'm, I'm working towards two to one attacks, not optimizing my attack results to get four, five, six to one, because I don't want to incur the losses. So what I would have to do to mitigate those losses is pull out the engineers, pull out the pioneers, pull out the artillery support, don't provide air support, and get the, the, the loss range down, uh, the DRM, down lower. So that on a three to one, or let's say I got a four to one, uh, I've gotta be careful though now, because four to ones, I can lose two steps if I roll a three, four, or a three or a four, and I can lose two steps if I roll 11 or a 12. Uh, so, to me, that's pretty high risk. Uh, and the best I can do is uh, roll a nine or a 10. So on a three or four average, I would need to get um, a nine or a 10, I would need to get six or seven DRM. But if I roll a five or a six, I screw myself and take two step losses. Or if I roll a one or a two, that's also not very good. So I'm having a hard time with this uh, thing. I think the game is interesting and there's, I can kind of, you kind of, you know how you can kind of see how, how uh, a game's gonna play out. What I see here is uh, eight or 10 turns of uh, attack, five or six turns of attacks at, on one hex where we fight, they lose a step or two steps, I lose a step, I get suppressed on one turn so I can't attack the next turn. They might then reinforce and then I attack and then we lose a step, uh, they lose two steps and we go through that exercise and let's, you know, we, we know that uh, Japanese battalion has five steps in it and then we've got some engineers in there to help them out and some other bits and pieces. So there's maybe there's six or eight steps and let's say they reinforce it once or twice with maybe even just one company. Well, well how long is it gonna to take to uh, kill that stack before they decide they wanna retreat and which they then can retreat into the mountains. So, I don't want to spend eight turns reducing one hex. I don't want to spend four turns reducing one hex. I don't believe it took four days to clear a kilometer of land. I have to check that, you know, do some reading. But in fact, you know what? I've got a Pacific War book uh, that's the, the history of the Pacific War. I'll have to have a look at that, uh, the military records see what the kind of the progress rate was across the across the island 
Now, at the, at the northern, the southern end of the island, things are progressing a little faster. We've got some more artillery, but now there's this, I, I'm pretty sure there's a rule where the artillery, unless it's adjacent to an HQ unit somewhere, they can't, you can't do cross service support of artillery. So you've got a little bit of the Marines there and a lot of army coming in and the army are, uh, are doing an okay kind of job. The Marines have kind of led the way. But Japanese have also got some great stacks in fortified on a hill. So they get you know, minus three to the DRM uh, when they're attacked. Which means, so keep that in mind, okay, so minus three, and I told you before that we got about plus five, right? So that means I've got a net plus two. So now, now with my assault result, my, my assault table results, that now I'm looking at a three or a four on, uh, on if I got a three to one, that's not good. I'm only getting um, I'm only getting a one one. So I'm losing one. They're losing one. Whereas uh, and then on a two to one attack, <clears throat> that's really nasty because I lose two and they lose one. And now the odds don't really shift that much as the as the sort of the results don't really shift that much as the as the values go up. So with a five to one attack, if I roll a six, they lose one. They lose two. I lose one. On a four to one, it's one one. Three to one, it's one one. Two to one, it's two one. So there's there's a little bit of scaling, but not as much. When you think that you you've gone from two to one advantage to five to one advantage, you're only inflicting one more loss at five to one than you are at two to one, and you're not losing as much. But the risk I run is I could lose two steps. And they all, and they can lose three, which is okay. But I, I can, you can't afford to lose two steps a turn in each attack doing four to one attacks. And I don't know that you can actually get four to five to one, four or five to one attacks uh, that very that often. Okay, final thing, and this will be it. I know this is a long video. I'm sorry because uh, I have not been particularly articulate this morning. Uh, control. Control is defined in the game, and uh, it's, you know, the last unit passes through and all that sort of good stuff. But then there's this kind of overall statement that uh, for the Americans to win, they have to have control of the island. And it doesn't really say what you have to control, have to have control of. I assume it means the townships, the, the gray town hexes or village hexes, and that's it. Uh, but does it include the factory? Does it? Do you need to have control of the hilltops? Because you know they might be strategic in value for some some reason. Do you have to have the airport? Uh, none of that is <clears throat> the airport, the airfield. None of that's really defined in the victory conditions at all. So that was a little. Uh, maybe I'm just missing something. Hey, and all of this comes with the caveat that I'm on my fourth or fifth turn of this. Uh, I'm not an expert in the game. I have asked a lot of questions about the game and got great answers back and really good support. My feeling though is that this is uh, struggling to capture the tense nature and desperate nature of the, of the combat and the conflict and it's a, a, a highly attrition based system and attrition based in that we're we're attacking a hex for possibly six turns, if if I'm looking at this correctly. So if I fast forward through this, I I could literally sit there and go, okay, every other turn the Japanese get to suppress the Americans so the Americans don't assault. Uh, but every other turn they do, and they get a two one attack, and on average they do this. I could just sit here and just pull pull Japanese chits off, and and. Uh, and then say, okay, eight, eight turns later, that hex is now reduced. Let's move to the next next place. So, um, to the next place. So anyway, not sure that's what I had in mind for, from getting out of this game. I'm wondering how different this is from the East Front uh, titles. And uh, the, the you know tank oriented armored battles uh, that, are, that are at the kind of company level. So that's that's curious to me. Number one and number two and the final. Well, here's one other thing that's kind of interesting and and a little and ends up being a little of a waste. 
wasted opportunity, I think, is the landing uh, exercise, the amphibious assaulting stuff. It's really pretty tedious, and it doesn't really do... It's not tedious. It just kind of happens. And, uh, yeah, you get some stuff bogged up in the, in the landing lanes and stuff like that, but the Japanese don't have any units placed on the beach anyway, so there's not a lot of... Uh, beach assault stuff going on. There's only one or two hexes that happened in. So I wonder why why even bother? Why not just start on the beach and just be done with it? Let's just assume that everybody gets to gets to land. We know how many people got killed coming in with from shore batteries. So let's just start with those losses. And sort of uh, going through this extra phase every every turn. You've got to go through this amphibious phase until everybody's on on deck. Uh, curious again. Alright. That's all I got for you. That's twenty minutes of ramble. Later.